Doug Thompson here, and we're in the shop, and we're just doing some more experimentation with welding copper. We did a video earlier about welding copper, and today I'm trying to emphasize that I want to try to find a copper that is close enough to the parent material. And this is just Romex, and I've cut the insulation off, and I'm going to go ahead and weld this copper and grind it and see if we can get a really close color match, and I think we will. The issue is if we were to have an art piece and we wanted to texture the copper with like an acid, do a chemical etch, I want the uh, weld to be as close metallurgically to the parent copper. So I've got the, the Miller Synchroway 250X set at about 150 amps, and I'm gonna tack it towards the middle here and then weld that section up and grind it off. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I leave myself enough copper off the weld so that I can grind and polish it and get a nice crisp corner. See if that makes a difference. Okay, now I'm gonna start at the front and I'll just run down the road with this uh, at about 160 amps, pedal all the way down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this weld with some silicone bronze, 1 16th inch. I've uh, dropped my amperage down to about 130. And again, I want good penetration, but I want to be able to grind the top half of it. So anyways, again, here's the copper weld and here's the silicone bronze. I'm just trying to see if we got pretty good penetration on that. And I think that we did. So I think structurally, I think, uh, that heat setting of about 160 was really good. The fact that we had, we backed this up with some steel angle iron helped to kind of shape that, not that that's too important, but I'm pretty happy with it. So if we look at the weld, this was the silicon bronze side and this was the full on copper side. And I don't think you can tell a whole lot of difference just visually. But if you were to apply a chemical etch to this copper, would it change the weld color? But that was the entire objective, just to see if we could do it. I've welded the angle iron piece with just a number 12 solid strand of Romex. But I think that's going to be too much for this next thing that we're going to experiment with. And again, this is an art project. This is not going to be for plumbing. So I've taken some stranded wire and I've peeled off a couple of strands to make a TIG rod. Probably not gonna get this diameter at the welding store on a Sunday afternoon. So I pulled off about six strands and I'm just gonna twist it all up. And this is what I was using for my TIG rod. It seemed to work pretty well. So this is maybe 80 to 100 amps on this next weld. So I thought we'd just do a little kind of bend test on this thing. Let's just apply a little bit of pressure to the top. It's not fully welded, it's ground off, and let's just see what it does. Starting to get a little bit of failure. Let me tap on it so I can break it. That was not fully welded, but I think for an artistic project, you could fully weld that and it'd be strong enough for most things that you might do. So I've got a pretty good feeling about how to weld up copper at this point. One could use silicon bronze, one could use Romex wire, or one could saw out some TIG rod from the base material to get a really close match. So what I did is I actually took a copper sheet and I cut out as close to a square as I could. So I'm going to start at about 160 amps with this uh, next series of welding. And I'm going to go ahead, and this is probably about a 14 gauge copper. I'm going to go ahead and show welding on the inside corner. And then I'll show welding the outside corner and the result on the back.
So I was really pulsing the pedal right in here. And I think with some practice, I could get pretty good at it. But uh, I think we're getting really good fusion either way. And I think with a little bit of practice, I can really dial it in. I'm just going to clean this up just to try it with another piece of copper and see if I can smooth that out. So that's a little bit better. I was kind of advancing and then coming back and advancing and coming back, trying to get some type of a rhythm so I could get that to lay down relatively evenly. So this was my last weld. I think it was my best weld. Obviously this piece is really hot, which kind of helps a lot. Maybe preheat the part if you're gonna weld it. But uh, you know, I think I'm starting to get that dialed in a little bit right between there and there. So I'm just continuing with some experiments and I'm gonna try to seam weld or butt weld two pieces of copper. They're about, uh, oh, 18, 20 gauge with the TIG welder. I'm gonna push the tungsten all the way back to make sure that I'm flush with the cup, then I'll go ahead and weld off maybe three spot welds on this 20 gauge copper. I just want to see if I can join it together. Oh, I've got about 25 CFH pure argon. I'm using the Synchrowave 250DX. I've got about 166 amps. I'm using 2% seriated tungsten inside, flush with the cup, and I'm going to see if I can get on and off this with the pedal. I don't have a pulsing or a spot welding function on my machine, but I think if I go on and off the pedal quick enough with this amperage, I think I should be able to do it. Here we go. I think I got it. So I'm just gonna try overlapping this a little bit. Out of four, I got one good one. And I'm gonna to continue to practice with it and uh, see if I can teach myself the best way to do it. So I'm just testing this to see how well I did. And a couple of these welds held really well. I think by adjusting amperage, doing a little experimentation, I think you can get something that is a pretty good result for some particular art project where you don't wanna have a bunch of weld on it.